gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today, a treat especial. It can't be a treat especial every time. I assure you, gentlemen, today is a treat especial. Today, I am finally a man. Do you hear that? That's right. That's the sound of my balls dropping. Well, which is what I would say if I was ever allowed into my wife's purse to go and get them. Check it out, yo. Hilti. A Lichtensteinian beauty. We're going to have a look at what 670 Canadian pesos gets you in the way of cordless weapons. Very thoughtful of them. What they save in packaging, they pass on to their profit margin. The Hilti SF10WA22 Darrell four gang charger right off the hop just for the one drill only come with two batteries but that is a great idea you know because wouldn't it be nice if if you bought a tool and the charger had two you could gang up two and, and charge them at the same time like instead of one after the other serialized that is a really good idea two batteries that's it that's all man damn where's the cocaine and blowjobs oh here we go ah <laughs> No, no, I'm, uh, I've made that mistake before. <laughs> You'll pardon me for being giddy, but it's just something about this. It might be psychosomatic placebo on account of spending so much, so many Kanaki Stan Kopecks on it, but it just feels good in the hand, like a, like a good hard day's work. <sighs> it's got a... A real interesting ramp up. It feels really skooky, man. This is like some sort of Maserati of automobiles. Check it out. It's got a four-speed transmission. This has got the Rome made in Germany keyless chuck. You recall that's the same chuck that was on the DeWilt, and it didn't stack up very well compared to this one that's made in Japan, the Yukiwa Seiko one. This one I I feel is a nicer chuck, but the, the Rome is a high quality made in Germany chuck. So what we'll do is we'll check the run out and see how it compares to the DeWalt, as well as uh, we can go in the historical file there and find out what the, the total indicated run out of that chuck was. One thing I noticed right off the hop here is that the North American style of drill is square. So the Bosch, and now I see the Hilti, is not square. You see that? And that makes sense when you're drilling uh, horizontal like this because your, your hand naturally, it doesn't want to stay up perfectly. It, it naturally goes to where it's a straight line with your arm. The problem is, if you're used to a totally square drill, in the machine shop, most of your drilling is going to be in a vise straight up and down so that you can get as square as possible of a hole. That's going to mess you up a little bit. You're going to have to get used to that different angulation. That's excellent. That's on par with the Teal Disaster, the pride of the fleet, Yukiwa on the Milwaukee drill. Right on par. No better though, but right on par. And that's plenty accurate for a hand drill, of course, anyway. That also tells us because it's the same chuck, likely this DeWilt uh, has got a slight weeble wobble at the at the bell end on account of the prestidigitatory malfeasance of Muffin Top and Clark Griswold. They gave this thing a hot supper and then gave it to me, so that's likely what's wrong with this. Well, so we got the batteria on the four gang guilty charger. Check it out. They're only they're only charging one at a time. They're not doing them side by each, so that's kind of, that's, you, you know, I want my fucking batteries right now. The thing about this is something that I've completely forgot. Oh, there's no noise. You know, when you're, I don't know, but this happens to me a lot. You're trying to film some high drama machine work, and you're trying to catch the perfect mood so that everyone can hear the classical music going, and you put a battery on the charger, and all you can hear is the Jesus fan. Well, in this case, there's no fan. This is perfect for YouTubery. Once it hits your hand, it just feels so good. And I figured out why. 
because they've taken a lot of care in the injection molding, the two star, the over molding process. Check this out. There is no joint. There's no seam there. It's just, it's perfectly, you can't even feel that. There's not even a thou a difference. And on the prosumer tools, they all uh, invariably have this big gnarly gash wherever the material changes. And of course they try and make it look like a transformer, some sort of rocket ship toy. And it feels that way in your hand when you actually feel it. You feel all this ribbing and all this like ribbed for her pleasure, not for his. This though, no expense spared. They took a lot of care in getting that perfect. We are in like sin. I don't know what the hell this does, but it came out of there. Beautiful. Oh, look at this. So we can communicate to the mothership here. Lichtenstein's Donald Trump is keeping an eye on us from beyond the grave. That's uh, some sort of yeah, magneto strictive sensor so that you don't shoplift the thing. And this clamshell, straight up pornography for tool nerds. Check out the patterning here. You can see. Wow. Wow, man. So you can see the EDM, uh, the pattern in. The, it's just incredible. Here's the uh, ejector pin marks. Look at this. They designed these in. Unlike on the skill saw. This is to retain the half shell, the part, in the correct half of the mold so that the next station can come along and over mold it. That's, <laughs> they actually planned for it instead of doing it after the fact with a die grinder and a dull apprentice. This thing is perfect. I'm talking fucking per- oh, wait. One little blonde one of an overshot there. Just, just gorgeous. Incredibly high quality. Glass fiber reinforced 30%. The TPE, the butylene rubber compound on the outside. Of course, that tells us that the beauty about this is it's so beautiful. You'd never want to get grease on it because if this ever started to peel on you or that would just break your heart. Now, Hilti, they cater to professional users and industrial users. So what will happen is they'll do fleet maintenance. So if you have a problem with the drill, they take it back and fix it. It's part of a fleet package. That way there's no, there's no dicking around. You don't got to think about it. Just they take care of all that for you. This is not a home gamer drill by any means. PA66, so that's nylon. The 66 is a... It's normally PA6, 66, glass fiber reinforcing, 35% by weight, 4 or 5% by volume. It's made for the cold. You can see the, there's, there's a symbol for cold in the, the plastique will not break in the extreme cold. Plano, Texas, and made in China. Beautiful part though, unfortunately. Big heat sink on here, unfortunately. And nice elastic. That's a capacitor just for noise suppression. This thing, uh, yeah, nicely, nicely built. It's unfortunate it's completely epoxied in there, potted, because we can't see what's going on. But essentially what will happen here is there will be a battery monitor as well as a, an H-bridge, a bunch of MOSFETs, which are electronical switches. Get a signal from this. And then depending on the position of a potentiometer, sends a different voltage back to the computer in here and gets those MOSFETs to turn off and on more or less. Gives you pulse width modulation, changes the voltage on you. Long story short. Now, these of course need, they need to break all of, they need to open up the circuit because if the MOSFETs in here blow up, they always fail closed so they fail short circuited and you'll see that in a tool you put the battery on especially one that's not brushed this or this is a brushed one so especially in a brushed one you put the battery on and it runs all the time that tells you right off the bat that the mosfets in the control module are hooped 
The devil is in the details and they are real nice details. Solastic here. This was filled uh, filled rather by an actual human being. We see they, they sort of shot some schmoo over there, but very nice mitigation for vibration. The connections, they've added a huge snubber diode for inductive kick when you open up the circuit and you got all those angry pixies going in one direction. Uh, and then all of a sudden you try and stop them. They get angry here and the voltage goes through the roof. That can fry stuff. So they add a snubber diode in order to mitigate that perfect threaded connections. So instead of a, a spring, you know, terminal that Weeble wobbles and maybe has 50 pounds of, of clamping, this has likely 500, 1,000 just from that little fastener. like to see that. And strain relief here. The switch is a Solman SG TG24. Uh, it's pretty light pull, uh, reasonably robust for what it is. Never heard of that brand. It's, I'm going out on a limb here and gonna say it's not the shittiest one you can buy. That's the mark of a quality tool is how well the plastic fits together, uh, because it's hard to do, man. It's not. It's a non-trivial task to get two very complicated geometries to fit perfectly together. Because recall, when, when you're putting this into a mold, it's molten and hot. And you want this to go together when it's solid, that is when it's crystallized, and cold. So everything, the sizing, everything changes. And you're trying to, it's educated guesswork, it's, it's artfulness. Here's the side shifter mechanism here for the H pattern. That little tiny pin, but it is metal. And here's the standard forward reverse. So this would actuate a the not the sun gear, but the the ring gear on a planetary gear set. Either lock it in or let it run free in order to get a different gear ratio through that planetary. As far as this guy goes. Who fucking knows? I'll have to take that apart. Glass fiber reinforced nylon gear housing. Eh, I was hoping, I was hoping that this would be metal. It's not metal. So that, that kills it right there. Very likely no drills on the market today have metal gear boxes. Here's the motor here, Mabuchi, and it's a monster. It is brushed and internally veined fan not external so that's a nice motor see here let's have a look at that just two brushes cogs over so it's permanent magnet brushed motor another nice little detail here we have a ferrite core inductor in order to suppress high frequency noise i got the spring off the back brush and this is not just plain old graphite brush carbon brush this it almost looks like copper but it's got to be copper impregnated graphite we'll have a look at that in the microscope so here we got a beautiful shot of the brush and we can see it looks to be almost 60 percent copper with just enough carbon in there for lubrication graphite for for lubrication conductive graphite for lubrication now we scratch the surface and we can see that deep down it's a lot blacker so is that part and parcel of being plated copper plated after the fact so here's the preload spring on the brush and we can see it's just engaging right on the very tippy top i don't know how uh, maybe not the best i'm sure over the lifetime of the drill we would see excess more wear where that is applying on that side of the brush than on the other side so the gear house itself, PA66, so not just PA6, but PA66, glass fiber reinforcing 50 GF, yeah, glass fiber reinforcing 50%. That helps with the thermal stability, but of course, the more glass fiber in there, the harder it is on the tools, on the mold that make these parts, so the more expensive these parts become. We'll take the motor off here. Yeah, sprung them a thong in everywhere. Oh, there's the pinion focus. You <laughs> <laughs> works every time. 
Unfortunately, it is not a steel forged gear or machined. It is a powdered, centered powdered metal gear. So even in the super high end drills, that's what you can expect. The days of machined gears are over. So the pinion's going to be turning down in there. If we spin that, we can see what's going on there. Spin the whole thing. And then when we want to change gears, this will pull up. There we go. Yeah. Pull that ring up and engage a different set of planetaries. So it gives you a different ratio. So that would, well, there's another reduction that adds a reduction essentially. So that would slow, slower the speed and increase the chooch factor by pulling that up. You get more torque out of her. Now the yaw, the trim, oh, we'll go with yaw. The yaw mechanism here, we'll turn on it and it engages another set of gears. And then we have, that's feels like almost one to one, not quite, but definitely a way faster speed there. So that's what's happening. Putting it side by side, this is actually, well, you can see the labyrinth here. It's actually pushing. It's, it is moving another one of these ring gears in order to engage a different set of pinions. So that's how we get the four speeds out of her. I don't really want to go in too much deeper because these things are hard to get back together. There's spring them a thing and spring them with all oh, kinds of nastiness and it's all greasy eh, all alone in the dark. So what I'm going to do is we are going to check the specs on the Mabuchi motor. I need to get on the confuser for that. If I can find a part stack up for this assembly, then I'll take it apart because at least then I have a reference. And don't fucking tell me, just take pictures. It doesn't work when a part goes flying away. But if there is an, a sub-assembly for this, then I'll take it apart. If a lot of times they won't give you parts for this, they'll just sell you this whole gearbox. If that's the case, then uh, yeah, we're out of luck. I'm not taking that apart because it's a beautiful drill. And I, you know what? Normally, after a teardown, uh, I'd like to tell you to put your name in the doobly doo there to to see if you would like to receive this beautiful Bonnie specimen. But in this case, fuck yeah, <laughs> I'm keeping it. Well, we're cut off at the bar, lads. The lights come on. The honeymoon is over. Unfortunately, this is a boutique. A boutique tool brand. What doesn't give you parts diagrams? They don't want you to fix your own, basically. They're not looking for small time guys. Well, maybe. But they, you know, outfits that aren't going to waste their time fixing it. They're looking more, I think, on the fleet side where they fix it for you. They have a guarantee, fast turnaround and so forth. But you can't even, you, I can't buy a part for it if I wanted to boner killer for sure when you can't take her apart fix her yourself oh i cannot for the life of me find where this goes somewhere in here i don't i, I don't know it, maybe it's not even from this tool i thought the bench was reason well no it was clean it must be from this tool i don't know no idea but we'll get her back together and we're going to test it out a little bit we're swapped over to the second battery now so it is doing it the thing is, with the four four speed transmission, you do get, where's the label here? You get right down to 310 ripple. So if you're, if you're driving, you know, something big, an auger or drilling steel, that is useful. In comparison, the typical prosumer tools, they go to 450. The lower the ratio, which means you get more torque. So you're going to get for the same apples to apples, you're gonna get more torque out of this guy for those big nasty drill bits. An well, interesting feature here, it's got plug braking or plugging, so a DC injection or, or something similar. It actually reverses, it seems to reverse the volt. What's in there? Something rattling around in there. Fuck.
That is why we don't allow amateurs to fix their drills. I broke the ferrite big chunk off here. Eh, fuck all in a big ship. I got that ferrite glued back together. Opposing dipoles. Hull back effect. Even more chooch for your chotch. And that extra part. Yeah, I found where that went. Straight to the land of engine rebuilders spare bolts. As I was saying, this thing seems like it's got an engine brake, like it reverses the polarity, stops real quick. And we'll put it in the low gear. Oh, no. Oh, not nearly as bad. <laughs> Maybe it had something to do with a chunk of ferrite stuck in a brush. Let's not point fingers. We're going to have a look at the battery. Real nice battery casement, PA66, and over molded as well. That scrappy, just total crap. One of those zebra labels just wipe off with a little bit of brake clean. We got 21.6 volts, 5.2 ampere hours, 112 watt hours. Instead of five batteries in series ganged up, we have uh, looks like four batteries in series ganged up. So that, no, six, six batteries. <laughs> yeah, so that gives us a little more voltage. These are nice cells. We bow at the temple of the battery mooch, Samsung, the green wrap, 25 hours. So 2,500 milliamp rated, uh, amp hour rated. And these are actually underrated, if anything, and very long lived, good longevity on them. So high quality cells in here and see all the celastic protection for the board itself this is odd it's relying like it can move around so it's relying on the case to hold it hold the contacts in place that's quite odd as far as the case itself pa6 so nylon quite flimsy Uh, this is nice. See, we actually have a proper rod, a nice spring, long throw spring here. So this is a very long-lived mechanism. And this itself is quite rigid. But the bottom, so the bottom must be relying just, just to fit with this to give it its stiffness. So the Wilty, compared to the Default or the Will Fuck Ye or the Hiscratchy or the Makita can't think of one for Makita. It has, they all go to 10. They have 10 batteries. This one not only goes to 11, but 12. Just, you know, just. Oh yeah. That thing's a skookum choocher. It's got miles of torque in all four gears. Yeah, this thing's a hell of a drill. As far as quality of materials, this is the best drill we've looked at as far as quality of engineering, fit and finish overall. Attention to detail. This is a very well-built drill that will serve me for years and years and years. Is it worth the 700 bucks? You're not going to rush out and buy a healthy drill. You're going to be a fleet guy that needs the epoxy resin, that needs the nail set gun, that needs the, the hole saw, the diamond blade, that kind of thing. And you maybe consider because you already got all the ancillary equipment and you already got the service contract in place. You're not, as a homeowner, this is way overkill. It is a nice drill. You'd be far better served by uh, a nice prosumer. I'm leaning towards teal at the moment. This is a lot like the old Alice Crapco drills that I loved and used for years and years. That was when they owned Milwaukee and... Uh, they made a proper contractor tool. They were beautiful. Tons of torque. Now, some guys are going to get hung up on the brushless, non-brushless. Yeah, 600, 700 bucks for a non-brushless. Or, yeah, but the batteries are super good and this thing's got oodles, oodles of torque. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice.